All right, I'm starting with a clean graph and a new Archimatics model. For this section, I am going to use the dome shape. And to keep things simple, my plan is going to be uh, lathe. So lathe gives us a, a radial plan. It's going to allow us to experiment with an unbroken dome, and it's just going to make creativity go a little bit faster. So uh, let's just hook it up. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, okay, for starters, I just want you to... Uh, Open up the controls on the dome and set this eggs really high, about 60. And while we're at it, let's go into the geometry on the dome shape. And we'll also set those segs pretty high, not as high, about 24 segments. And if you want to know how this looks, uh, go ahead and turn on shaded wireframes and you can see how Archimatics is building the, uh, is deciding how many, how many, uh, polygons and vertices your shape gets based on these seg settings, right? So I want it to be, mm, basically square, but obviously as we, as you curve up on top of the, uh, the shape, uh, you know, these polygons get a little close together. But anyway, no, you know how you know how this works. So I'm gonna turn off the shaded wireframe. Alright, so um Yeah. Let's get started. I I just want to uh visually compare. Um, you know, the, the effect of these two basic settings, the width and the height. This is where we're going to start in our, come on, in our, in our shape. So I'm just going to stamp some of these. And actually, I'm just going to speed things up by using these scene handles. And stamp... Make a really tall and thin one. Stamp. And what do we need? Something low and wide. And I'm not going to stamp that one. So we're just going to compare these real quick. All right, as game models, right? As like architecture. Perspective is everything, how you're going to be looking at these. If this is top down, then that height mm, doesn't really mean anything. But if you are walking around in a village, the width is a little less apparent and the height is everything. So obviously everything I say here is going to be specific to what, um, <laughs> you know, what you're planning. Now, let me do something else. Just gonna remove my stamps, and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make the width and the height. Um, well, I'm just gonna type these in. So uh, I'm gonna make the width four, and the height so gonna be two. Okay, I'm gonna stamp. And slide that over here. Now the another one in the same ratio is going to be two and one. I'm going to stamp. 
Uh, I'll make one more. Six and three and stamp. Now you're wondering why I'm doing this. This seems really dry and boring. I will show you why in just a minute. Let's do uh, five and 2.5. Now, if you're paying attention, you'll notice that all of these domes, these roof domes, they have the same ratio and it's a two to one width ratio, but what you'll see is when you're down in this, uh, all of these domes, these are similar. So geographically or ratio wise, these are all the same domes. They're all two to one. And you can see like clearly these are holding the same shape. So this is the first lesson is a roof dome with the same height to width ratio is going to look like the same shape. And we can actually force this to happen by uh, an expression. And my expression is going to be under the width. I'm going to type in, I'm going to control my height parameter. So we're going to start with height equals width and we're going to multiply this by a ratio times open parentheses uh, how's this going to work width times let's do two-thirds two divided by three and we'll close the parentheses all right let me just open that up so that you can actually make sure that you can see that all right really simple expression height equals width times two-thirds okay and we're gonna hit done and now oops, let me just clear out my stamped models all right now no matter what I set my width the height is always going to be two-thirds so every dome that I stamp out uh, based on just one parameter, these are all going to be the same shape, just different sizes, different scales, but they're all, uh, I guess what you would call similar. You see, if you line them up, they, they fit right in on top of each other, right? Now, if I was going to go the other way uh, and create an expression for the height to control the width, this is really easy. Uh, so we're controlling the width. Width equals height times and what was our ratio before was two-thirds. This time we're going to flip the ratio and do three halves. You understand how that works? So under width, the ratio is two-thirds. Under height, the ratio is three halves. And now it doesn't matter which one I set, height or width, they're going to keep that ratio. But you see how we flip that ratio. Okay, now before I forget, 
We're going to be doing a lot of parametrics and, uh, you know, setting, setting a lot of settings while we play with this. So I'm just going to make this easier by exposing the height and width, since those are the ones that I'm probably going to use the most. <laughs> so under height and under width, I am clicking the expose. And what that does over here on the inspector under runtime parameters, that exposes those two parameters so I can just always find them quickly here, no matter how complicated our graph is getting, okay? Um, now there is a, a kind of a concept, right? That our, our roof, we're setting a, a kind of a half section. So the width is creating a half section, but the actual roof is covering something a little abstract, which is a full span. So I have a parametric relation here that is not really on, it's not really something that I'm physically building, but it is something that I'm conceptually working with. Um, I'm going to keep referring to that, so I'm going to go ahead and make that a concrete thing. I'm just going to make a parameter and call it span. And uh, at the moment, w we do have a parametric relation between the width of our section and the span of our rooftop. And so the way that I would express that is uh, under span, width, because that's what span is controlling, width, width equals span. And what's our expression? Width is half the span. So width equals span divided by two. So if I set my span to, it needs to cover like, you know, five meters. I'll pretend I landed on five. Then I'm setting my section width to half of that. Makes sense, right? Uh, just to help visualize this, because it's going to come up, I, I went ahead and I made a little, a little, like a span caliper. <laughs> okay, so this is just a, this is just a shape um, to kind of make this abstract concept uh, something that we can, we can see visually for this tutorial. So this is just like a little caliper, a bracket that just kind of is letting you show how how wide my span is. I'm just going to go ahead and connect this. This severely isn't part of the tutorial. This is just kind of a, an aid to help you see what's going on when I talk about this. All right, so w normally, you know, uh, you don't just get to make like whatever roof size you want. You're trying to cover a specific, <laughs> a specific span. So now we have a relation between an abstract concept, which is the span of our roof, and a uh, specific engineering parameter, which is the width of the section. This is going to make more sense as we go on why I'm showing you this. This is either right now you're either like, well, duh, or you're like, why? Who cares? So since you don't have a lot of control over the span, usually, because that's going to be dictated by your building, and you just need the roof to fit. Uh, yeah, we, we don't get to control the width, because it's dictated by the building. Our only creativity at this point is the height, which is... Oh, why aren't you working? Oops. Yeah. Yeah, I want to take out both ratios. So just in case it's not clear, I deleted both of those uh, uh, ratios. And now I have a span ratio, which is dictating the width. 
And my height is really the only creativity that we get now because we don't have a choice in the width anymore. You understand how our, our options are limiting? This is part of like how you get parametrics to make sense is you figure out, you eliminate <laughs> the stuff that you uh, are free to control versus the things that need to be controlled by something specific. All right, so this is the most boring roof ever, just this straight dome. But that's fine because it's about to become a little more complicated. Um, for our next roof, I'm going to create, uh, recreate the world's largest concrete dome, unreinforced. It's 2,000 years old. It's the Parthenon in Rome, and it will forever be the largest concrete dome that is unreinforced because since the Romans, steel has been invented. So this is a world record that will never be defeated because we would never build a dome this way. Um, but what they do is, uh, let's just jump in here and set a little bit of I'm going to set the uh, inset upper and lower on this dome shape. And right here on the lathe node, I'm going to open up this radius. I'm also going to turn off that top cap and bottom cap. All right, so that opens up a hole in the middle of our roof dome. Um, so this is, this is what I want you to understand. So now our span, clearly, mm, isn't lining up anymore, <laughs> right? We have a new parameter here that's doing something else and it's not part of our equation. So let's just, uh, create that parameter. I'm going to call it Oculus. I'm going to relate this Oculus to the radius on the lathe. And now we need to get that span to take into consideration the oculus. So let's go back into our span and the width plus the oculus is half the span. The full span is two times the width plus the oculus. So our width uh, is span divided by two minus the oculus. And now this is an order of operations kind of thing. So we need to do the division first. So span divided by two, and then subtract the oculus. Uh, now, where is our oculus? Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's set it to something obvious like one. <laughs> uh, and let's set width to something around like four. Now the parameters don't feed back to the span, so this is one way, but as we uh, calculate this, 
Now my oculus is set, and the span is taking into account the oculus setting and adapting the width. And you see my little caliper is keeping its parametric relation, right? If I set the oculus to smaller, 0.5, and my span still works. Okay, so what we've done is we've created a, uh, it's a ratio, but it also takes into consideration a second parameter. So two parameters here controlling a third. Now, uh, this is fine if we have a specific set gap that we need to preserve and our parametric relation changes the width but another way to do this and this might actually make mm, more sense is we're going to flip this around in a different way i'm going to change the parameter that we're setting to the oculus And we're going to preserve the width. And even though it didn't really, uh, you know, it's not it's not that that different in the in the uh, programming. But now, when we set the span, uh, something a little different happens. You remember how how our dome ratio is preserved as long as we keep the width and height the same or in, in, you know, in the same ratio. What we're ending up with here is from the ground, uh, you know, we are preserving this curve. We're preserving this ratio between height and width. But thanks to this formula, we're covering a bigger rooftop. Right, but from, from the ground, we're seeing the same shape. But we have a bigger hole. <laughs> Alright, let's look at what we can do with this hole. Uh, I'm going to set this oculus much smaller. And then I'm going to... Oh, that didn't work. <laughs> okay, that's what I need to do. I forget what I'm controlling. Oh, wait. Okay, so before I forget, I'm going to uh, expose the oculus. So what are my three parameters now? Width, height, oculus. Um... While we're here looking at this lathe node, there's a little more to it that I think that we should look at and why that I picked the lathe node for this tutorial rather than like plan sweep. And part of that is that you get to play with uh, this trick, which is, let's just make sweep angle uh, 180. So obviously that's half of 360. And our shape got a little janked. <laughs> and let's fix that. All right, so I think what I'm going to do here is add a little bit of thickness on the output. Yeah, yeah. And, uh,. Kind of like a cutaway roof, right? Alright, before we go any further, I'm going to put a material on this because this grid is a little misleading. It looks perfect in any direction. And that's not actually what's happening as far as I know. I'm going to put on some shingles. You know, something directional that you might actually use. Try that one. Uh, 
All right, the outside of our roof, right? Maybe I'll make these a little uh, smaller. Okay, when the direction on the outside of this roof works, see my, my shingles flow from the top to the bottom. On this underside, with the thickener, uh, no, that's not what's happening. So the UV is flowing around the outside in the direction that we want on the outside, but then it wraps around and flows upside down on the underside. All right, if our thickness is, say, zero, and instead of these end caps, we have a back face. Yeah, same problem. Same problem. The material wraps correctly around the outside. Well, that's the direct, you know, correctly. But the inside is upside down. Yeah, how are you going to fix that? Well, you're probably going to have to use two models. <laughs> but that's okay. You usually don't, like, shingle the inside of your roof, right? All right, anyway, I just wanted to explain that and point it out to you that chances are what you're going to end up doing is either thickening or using back faces. But as long as we're outside the model, yeah, you don't need either one, right? And I'm going to put that back to 360. Uh, now, while we're still on this lathe node, um, I'm just going to jump up here to the lathe segs, and I'm going to type in four. So, four segments on the lathe. I'm typing on the wrong computer. <laughs> and we've got a really simple um, square shape. I'm also going to uh, switch the segs on this dome shape down to one and dome shape did not appreciate that <laughs> because its minimum is set to three and i'm going to override that and change that to one all right so now what we have is oh i'm going to go ahead and just close that oculus Yeah, zero. And I'll reduce the height a little bit so that we can see what's going on here. <coughs> Alright, so now what we have is a pitched roof. And, uh... Notice what lathe is doing. This is just a little awkwardness. Lathe is going corner to corner. And that's different if, than if we were using a square plan. We would be going flat to flat. So the different tools that you use are going to create different shapes. So it's really great to just keep practicing and keep putting shapes together. Um... <clears throat> Just a, a, a couple of things about roof building here. So while we're here, now lathe, oops, let go. Lathe is, you know, when we go on to build our full roofs a lot later in this tutorial, we're not going to be using the lathe node. We're just using lathe right now because it simplifies everything. But um, there's a couple of things that, you know, are worth 
are worth noticing because uh, actually symmetrical shapes are like everything. And also lathe exposes some controls here that um, are kind of fundamental concepts to uh, archimatics. So one of the things I'm going to do is switch over to like a, I guess it would be a gazebo roof, like a six, uh, six sided roof. <clears throat> and I'm actually going to turn on our shaded wireframe again. All right. So what I want to talk about is these controls faceted and continuous U. So continuous U, when it's on, it <coughs> works for really high smooth segments because it wraps the uh, UV, except it's just the U, it wraps the U seamlessly around the shape. But if we have a really low segs setting, like four, six, a, you know, where we want to see, this gets distorted. Continuous U is just kind of weird, right? It distorts the, uh, the UV map. So you turn on faceted. Wait, no, we turn off continuous U. Faceted seems to not play well with these uh, things. I'll fix that in a second. So faceted makes these break lines more logical for something like the shingled roof with a low segs count. What faceted is doing, <coughs> you see how the, the shading, the shadow kind of shifts as I toggle? And on your own experiments, this will become more apparent. Faceted changes the normals on the shape to be more flat. If you uh, have seen these controls, these are very similar. So this would be the geometry and this one would be the normals. I think that's how it works. That's basically what you're doing here is you're controlling the normals. So uh, turn faceted on when you want the flat, the shapes to be shadowed flatly and leave it off if you want it to seem to be a little more curved. And of course, this also has to do with how many, you know, if you're curving, you know, our rooftop is a nice, smooth, circular uh, shape. Yeah, ignore that ugliness. I don't know what's going on there, but it's losing the UV map. And continuous U. Again, these are things you're going to need to play around with on your own models so that you can see the difference. Okay, but wait, 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 what I forgot to show you while we're here. So, you know, simple pyramid with a, with a curve. Let's do the opposite. So let's go. No curve. And uh, with a curved plan. So, okay, so do you understand the division here? Section? plan. So one can be curved, the other can be flat. Alright, so now we've got a turret cone. I'm going to take off that shaded wireframe. I'm also going to take off these inset uppers and lowers because they are just messing up my tutorial. <laughs> All right, continuous U versus facets, uh, versus not continuous U on a really smooth shape doesn't seem to make any difference, right? Here's faceted and continuous U. 
Sometimes these shapes are going to, you know, be obvious when you change them. Other times, not so obvious. If you're done with that high, that's when it's going to start, you know, becoming more apparent. Right, so here is something in between. Faceted or not, you can see that little shadow shift. And continuous view or not, that one is a definite shift. Play around. All right, the next roof is, here we've had a one straight, let's just do two. In fact, while we're at it, let's go ahead and expose uh, this segs also. All right, with a two, I'm gonna jump back down to four on our main sex. All right, this is a actual rooftop called a mansard. And the deal with the mansard, if you adjust this tension, uh, the mansard was a way to cheat the tax man. <laughs> because it's not a third story, it's a roof, even though this is kind of a garret space underneath. So by using a mansard, which is two segments and a higher tension, in fact, let's just expose the tension. Okay, so what they were doing was they were cheating, they were making their roof bigger, like cover a bigger volume, and then they could rent it out as an apartment, you know, make it another bedroom, make it whatever, it was another floor, but they were saying, hey, no, no, we're not three stories, we're only two stories and a big roof. Well, the tax man got smart and was like, yeah, you guys got to stop doing that because we're going <laughs> to, we're going to tag, even though it is a roof. This is still what's called a garret. So they, uh, in France and England, also they they set a specific, um, specific tax bracket if you enclosed your roof this way. But the important takeaway is that the mansard creates a larger volume under the roof, and then that makes this a usable, livable space. This will come in very handy when you're building your stuff, right? And typically what you end up with is some kind of a... Um, where is our little house shape? Yeah, okay. I'm just going to make a little goofy um, prop, a window prop. You get the idea. If you just had like a little prop window, you could, uh, you know, this is the idea of how a mansard works, right? And that creates a little fake garret space underneath, okay? Just a prop. It doesn't cut through, but you don't need it because that kind of really sells that this is, you know, another usable space, right? Now, after the, after the mansard became a thing, right? Uh, later in the United States, um, probably uh, in Europe too, like about a century later, uh, what ended up happening was this look became kind of old-fashioned and established and uh, basically in cheap labor housing. So we're talking like Brooklyn, um, you know, probably any like working uh, class company town. Uh, what they ended up doing was it was cheaper 
to build the first story out of, you know, brick, first one or two stories out of brick, and then the top floor would just be made out of wood, but it wasn't really a mansard. <laughs> it was completely faked. It was a wall, and um, it is still a valid rooftop that you will see and that you'll need to create. But, uh, what it ended up doing was basically the equivalent of our oculus. But we had the flat roof. And I'm going to go ahead and expose this top cap. Just so we can play with that. And I'm going to give it a its own material too. All right, that's fine. Like the actual texture doesn't <laughs> doesn't really matter, but the idea is your the uh, the upper floor is finished as if it is a mansard roof. It's not. It's a wall, and then the actual roof is you know just. <clears throat> wood, probably covered in tar, and maybe a little gravel, um, today it would be uh, asbestos, like an asbestos roll of tar, but uh, also this is like big in commercial buildings from like 1800s on, it's just a cheaper way to make the upper roofs, and the other day I was walking around in my neighborhood and, and yeah, I actually saw an example of this. So, this is where you're going to use your oculus. And, well, in the next tutorial, you're going to see more. But now, now that you have this flat roof, <coughs> uh, everybody got fancy after this, and they started deciding that, yeah, okay, so now we can have... Um, you know, bring back these little curves. And uh, now you know how to construct this. But I have one final, one, one final uh, official roof to show you. And it's basically this curve inverted. So... Uh, we can take our tension and you can set it negative, but it's gonna, it's getting like ugly. It's starting to kind of, <clears throat> you know, the geometry is not really working out. <laughs> as You can see the shape is inverting. So here's probably the last and most, um, the last and, uh, you know, m most complicated is I'm going to go ahead and open up this logic script on our modified dome shape. Yeah, and here you, <laughs> you can see. Yeah, that's not working out. So what we have that's making, that's making the, uh, the curve is this molding called dome. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna enclose this line in a conditional block. Okay. Uh, so it's going to be if tension greater than, and we write that as GT, greater than zero. <coughs> and uh, then I'm going to close the 
if block with end if. And uh, if it's not greater than zero, <coughs> in other words, if it's less than zero, I'm going to create a uh, second conditional block. Now I've just copy pasted. So if lesser than, see how I'm changing that conditional? So now if lesser than zero, <coughs> I'm just going to change the molding dome to Overlow, and if you if you go on the community archimatics website, uh, I have a a quick reference with all of these commands. Now let's see if this is working. Ah, okay, so now it is it is flipping, but I have to do one more thing. Let me open this up a little wider. Okay, I have to set the tension to negative. Because this actually flips around the way the tension molding works. <clears throat> okay, and now we have... I've been talking a little too long and I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now we have the final roof. This is called a tent roof. Um, in the, I'm just going to reduce this segment to like eight. Okay, now you see I have a shape that is still fighting me with the UV. We can, uh, if tension is larger than zero, it switches to dome molding. And if tension is smaller than zero, oops, that was segs, not tension. And if tension is smaller than zero, it flips to overload molding. And what you'll notice right away is <clears throat> if a mansard creates more volume under the roof, a tent roof removes volume, like very quickly, you start losing space under the roof. And this note is so huge now. Hold on one second. And so uh, one typical place that you see this is in German towers, like uh, they call them witch towers. And they made them very tall. And we're going to close that oculus. Okay, so now without the oculus, you see you lose volume under under that a uh, tent roof really fast. So as a result, you know, to kind of like visualize with our little window here, to get any kind of like usable space under here, you had to send that roof way up, right? So this is a smaller volume and it compensates by shooting up into the sky. That's the witch tower roof, also just called a tent roof whenever, um, you know, when you only have a few vertices, oh, a few vertices, a, a, a few corners, like if it's square. Okay, but if the mansard, you know, actually uh, uh, saves money from the tax man by creating a bigger volume than the uh, the final roof. Um, our final rooftop is something called a Second Empire or Neo-Baroque. And you see these on Victorian buildings. 
and also commercial buildings from the middle of the 1800s. And what they did was they took advantage of that flat roof and styled an inward curving wall. And it was kind of a sign of, uh, there was sort of a propaganda campaign against this shape, against Neo-Baroque, because it was associated with like aristocracy and corruption and, you know, being overly decorative. So there was a counter movement against it, which of course, you know, praised basically anything that was not French, which was like, uh, you know, traditional English architecture like Tudors. But anyway, this is my last rooftop and you see that you, um, by bringing in the second empire roof, uh, whatever your little prop you have here, um, you know, it's going to have to adjust, right? Because our roof recedes rather than bowing out. All right, that is my part one of a rooftop tutorial. And uh, I will be back for part two when we adjust the plans to uh, fit our section shape, our decorative section shape to your specific roof, okay? So that's gonna be a second video because I need a break. <laughs> Stay creative and I'll see you soon.